thank you very much. At first, I would like to thank the organizers of such a wonderful workshop. It's always a, a pleasure to participate. And this talk on eigenfunctions of block graphs of stainless systems is based on joint work with Sergei Gurayanov. Let me start with uh, some definition. So a K regular graph on the vertices is called strongly regular with parameters V, K, lambda, mu. If any two adjacent vertices have lambda common neighbors and any two distinct non-adjacent vertices have mu common neighbors. A strongly regular graph G is primitive is both G and its complement are connected. If G is not primitive, we call it in primitive and the examples of uh, uh, all in primitive strong regular graphs are disjoint unions of complete graphs and their complements. So this lemma describes the spectrum of a strong regular graph. If G is a primitive strong regular graph with parameters V k lambda mu, when we can calculate the spectrum uh, just uh, using this parameters. So we have three different eigenvalues k, r, and s, where r is po positive and s is negative, and their respective multiplicities, mk, mr, and ms, and you can see the formulas from them on the screen. A stainless system with parameters t, m, n, is a type of block design where points are elements of set S of size, <coughs> I'm sorry, of size N, oh, sorry, and blocks are M element subsets of S with the property that each T element subset of S is contained in exactly one block. A stainless system with parameters 2MN is also known as 2MN1 design or just a 2 design. The block graph of the 2 design is the graph with the blocks of the design as the vertices in which two blocks are adjacent if and only if they intersect. A stainless system with parameters 2, 3, n is called a stainless triple system and its, block are, its blocks are called triples. So this term describes the, uh, the block graph of a two design that is not symmetric, is strong regular, uh, which has the parameters you can see on the screen and the spectrum K, K minus N and minus M. Let uh, V and Q be a vector space of dimension N over finite field of Q. The affine space A, G and Q is the geometry whose points, lines, planes, etc., are the cosets of the subspaces of the vector space of dimension 0, 1, and so on till n. The affine space A, G, and Q is a stainless system with parameters 2, Q, Q to the power n, where the blocks are the lines of the affine space. Let us call such a system an affine stainless system and denote such a system as AS and Q. The projective space PG and Q is the geometry whose points, lines, planes, etc., are the subspaces of vector space V n plus one Q of dimensions one, two, so on till n plus one. The projective space PG and Q is also a stainless system, but with parameters 2, q plus 1, and q to the power n minus 1 over q minus 1, where the blocks are the lines of uh, the projective space. Let us call such a system a projective stainless system and denote such, such a system as PS and Q. Let P be a projective space. A set S of subspaces of P is called skew if no two distinct subspaces of S have a point in common. Let S be a set of skew subspaces. A line is called a transversal of S if it intersects each subspace of S in exactly one point. And uh, this lemma says us about uh, two skew lines in 
projective space. So let L1 and L2 be two skew lines from P and denote by T a point outside L1 and L2. Then there is at most one transversal of L1 and L2 through this point T. If P is three dimensional, then there is exactly one transversal of these two lines through point T. Let P be a three dimensional projective space a non-empty set R of skew lines of P is called a regulus. If the following statements are true, the first one, through each point of each line of R, there is a transversal of R. And the second one is, through each point of a transversal of R, there is a line of R. It follows from these definitions that the set R op of all transversals of a regulus R again form a regulus. We call it the opposite regulus of R. If P is a three-dimensional projective space over finite field FQ, then any regulus consists of exactly Q plus one lines. Uh, and if P is a three-dimensional projective space over some field F, then uh, the regulus can be described by three skew lines. So any free skew lines define a regulus in projective space of dimensional free of a finite field. Let us define the notion of regulus in uh, affine spaces. So all the definitions are the same, but uh, in this case, we uh, speak about affine spaces. So we for a regulus, we should have an affine, spa affine space ag 3 q And uh, in case of affine spaces, every regulus consists of Q lines. Uh, and in case of projective spaces, any regulus consists of Q plus one lines. But all the definitions are the same as in case of projective space. Now, uh, let us see the example of regulus in affine spaces. Let A in angular brackets denote the linear span of the vector A and consider two triples of uh, affine state system and with parameters and free. So the first one is T1. Uh, with points 0, A to A, which is a linear span of vector A. The second one is the linear span of vector B. And each of these triples is a subspace of vector space V and free of dimension one. Let C be a point of uh, our uh, affine Stainer system, such that it is not a linear combination of points A and B. Note that there are three to the power n minus nine different choices for the point C. Consider four more triples of uh, this affine space uh, T3, which is a linear span of C plus A plus B, T4 linear sp span of C plus B plus A, T5 linear span of 2C plus A plus 2B, and T6, linear span of 2C plus B plus 2A. Note that in the block graph of uh, a fine Steiner system, these six triples induce a subgraph, which is isomorphic to complete bipartite graph with two parts of size three. One part consists of T1, T3, and T5, and the other part consists of T4, T2, T4, and T6. Uh, since all lines uh, in the first part and in the second part are skew, then the set S1 and S2, uh, which contain this first three lines and the second line respectively, are regularly that are opposite to each other. So we have an example of regular in a uh, space of dimension <clears throat> over, over final field F3. Now, if we set uh, point C to be a linear combination of points N and B and without loss of generality set it to zero, then we have uh, uh, once again six uh, 
different lines, but in that case, all lines lie in the same plane. And uh, moreover, uh, the points from T, the lines uh, T1, uh, uh, the lines T1, T3, and T5 are parallel, and lines T2, T4, and T6 are parallel. So they form two different parallel classes in uh, a fine space AJ23. Next, we describe a generalization of the example about, uh, you, you see before for a fine space over final field FQ. Consider two families of lines. The family S1 is uh, the family with linear space spans KC plus B plus KA, where K runs through the field of Q, and S2 is a family of linear spans KC plus A plus vector KB, where Q runs from over the field of Q. And uh, A, B, and C are three linearly independent points. Uh, if we let point C be a linear combination of points A and B, and once again, without loss of generality, let C be zero, then all lines from union of S1 and S2 line in the same plane. And uh, uh, again, uh, uh, lines from S1 and S2 form two different parallel classes. Actually, the sets of lines S1 and S2 are a pair of opposite regularly in the three-dimensional subspace that is the linear span of A, B, and C. Uh, that is a three-dimensional subspace in A, J, and Q. That's what our proposition one says. And the next proposition, and uh, now we have an example. And the next thing we're going to uh, le uh, learn is how to get from regulus from projective space to the regulus from a fine space and vice versa. So the pr proposition two describes the reduction of projective regulus. Let R1 and R op be regulus in projective <coughs> space PG3Q and its opposite regulus, respectively. Let L uh, be a line from the regulus and L op be a line from the opposite regulus. And let uh, H be the plane determined by the intersecting lines L and L op. Then the removal of the points of this plane from projective space leaves an affine geometry, AJ3Q, with regulus R prime and an opposite regulus R op prime, where R prime and R op prime are obtained from R and R op by removal of the lines L and L op together with their points. And if we have two regulars, two regularly R and R op in a fine space AJ free Q, <clears throat> such that the systems of a pairwise Q lines from R and the pairwise Q lines from R op can be embedded into two classes of parallel planes, respectively then the pair of opposite regularly R and R op can be extended to a pair of opposite regularly in the projective closure of this affine, germ, affine space that is isomorphic to projective space pg 3 q The pair of opposite regularly S1 as S2 uh, in a three-dimensional affine subspace linear span of ABC from proposition one can be embedded into two classes of parallel planes. So that means that it can be extended. And the corollary is, is this. The pair of opposite regulars one and S2 in a three-dimensional affine space ABC from proposition one can be extended to a pair of opposite regular in a projective closure of uh, this linear span that is isomorphic to projective space pg 3 q And we have our first problem that is, is there a regulus in a fine space aj 3 q whose lines cannot be embedded into a class of parallel lines? We uh, don't have an example of such regulus right now. Next, uh, I'm going to
Well, Dmitry, by some reason we cannot hear you. Oh, sorry. Uh, fine, where... you know, everything is fine. Where you lost the, the connection? Uh, right here. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. Uh, let me start again over the slide. Let theta be an eigenvalue of a graph G. A real valued function f on the vertex set of G is called an eigenfunction of the graph G corresponding to the eigenvalue theta or just a theta eigenfunction of G if uh, this function is not a constant zero and for any vertex U in graph G, the condition theta multiplied by the value of the function for the vertex U equals the sum of values of these functions for vertices W, where these vertices W come from the neighborhood of the vertex U. The summary of results on the problem of finding the minimum cardinality of support of eigenfunctions of graphs and characterizing the optimal eigenfunctions is presented in work by Sotnikova and Valuzhenic. Uh, let G be a primitive strong regular graph with parameters V, K, lambda, mu, and let theta be a non-principal eigenvalue of G then an eigenfunction of G corresponding to the eigenvalue theta has at least one plus modular theta plus modular theta minus lambda multiplied by theta minus K over mu. The lower bound given in lemma three is known as weight distribution bound. And uh, from this statement, we have a corollary Corollary, that is, let G be a primitive strong regular graph with non-principal eigenvalues S and R, then an eigenfunction of G corresponding to the eigenvalue R has at least two R plus one non-zeros, and an eigenfunction corresponding to the eigenvalue S has at least minus two S non-zeros. And we can formulate the next problem, that is, characterize the Stainer systems with parameters to a man for the block graphs of which the weight distribution bound is tied for the negative eigenvalue S. And we have some results on this problem. Let uh, S to um, M be a stainless system in which there exist two intersecting blocks contained in a subsystem isomorphic to the affine plane AG to M, then for the block graph of such a Stainer system, there exists a minus M eigenfunctions with two M non-zeros. In particular, this means that the weight distribution bound is tied for this eigenvalue minus M. And uh, some natural examples of uh, such Stainer systems are affine Stainer systems where N, the dimension is uh, more or equal to three, and uh, Q is a prime power and whole triple systems. That is a uh, standard triple systems in which any three non-collinear points generate an affine plane AJ free Q. The next result is proposition six. So let S to Q plus one and be a standard system in which there exists a subsystem isomorphic to projective space PG free Q. Let R be a regulus contained in this projective space and R O be its opposite regulus. Uh, the size of both regulus are, is a cube plus one lines. Then the function f defined on the vertices of the block graph of our Stainer system as uh, it takes the value one when the vertex lies in the regulus r. It takes the value minus one if the vertex lies in opposite regulus r op and it takes the value zero otherwise is exactly a minus q plus one eigenfunction of the block graph of our Steiner system. In particular, this means that the weight distribution bound is tied for the eigenvalue minus Q of such Steiner system. And natural examples of Steiner systems satisfying the condition of this proposition are projective uh, Steiner systems. 
Note that the tightness of the well distribution bound for the smallest eigenvalue of Grassmann graph was shown in general in paper by Konrotov and McGillan. And the next proposition is about a fine spaces. Let S to QM be a standard system in which there exists a subsystem isomorphic to the affine space at J free Q. Then for a block graph of such standard system, there exists N minus Q eigenfunction with two Q non-zeros. So the well distribution bound is tied once again for the eigenvalue minus Q. And the natural example is, of course, a fine stainless systems. And uh, uh, the next proposition will be about eigenfunction of uh, a, fi a fine stainless system, which has a little bit more non-zeros than the weight distribution bounds. So let R be regulars contained in projective space PG for Q and are all be it opposite regulars. Uh, each of uh, regulars has exactly Q plus one lines. Consider a plane H, which does not contain the lines from this regulars, but contains Q plus one points from regulars R. The removal of the points of H from projective space PG free Q leaves an affine geometry AJ free Q with the Two sets of Q plus one lines, R prime and R O prime, where R prime and R O prime are obtained from R and R O by removal of Q plus one points. So let S to Q N be a stainless system in which there exists a subsystem isomorphic to the affine space AJ free Q. Then the function F defined on vertices of a block graph of such system S, uh, you can see it on the screen, it takes one if x lies in r prime and minus one if x lies in r op prime and zero otherwise, is a minus q eigenfunction of a block graph of our Steiner system, but in this time with two multiplied by q plus one, no zero. So it has two more non zeros than in the way distribution bound. Next, uh, we will discuss the equitable partitions. So let p, let pi, sorry, be the partition of the vertex set of a graph G into T parts with the property that every vertex of part V i has exactly P i j neighbors in the J, then uh, this partition is called an equitable T partition of G and matrix uh, with all coefficients P i j is called the quotient matrix of equitable partition. You can see below on the slide is an example of equitable to partition of a Peterson graph. So uh, let me quick characterize the strong regular graph with eigenvalue minus three. Primitive strong regular graph with the negative eigenvalue minus three are Latin square graphs block graphs with standard triple systems, and finally, many other graphs. And uh, the study of equitable two partitions of graph with eigenvalue minus three goes as follows. So at first, equitable two partitions of the Johnson graphs were studied uh, this, uh, in 2012, and in 2022, the characterization was completed. And uh, in 2007, uh, Sergei Grinov started the study of equitable two partitions of a bilinear forms graph. And this study was later extended to the characterization of equitable two partitions of Latin square graphs in general. Uh, e, during the study of equitable two partitions of bilinear form graphs, uh, was delayed the approach for uh, this uh, for finding and characterizing equitable two partitions, which I going to present next. So let P be the quotient matrix of T partition of a graph G. Then each eigenvalue of P is an eigenvalue of the JCC matrix of this graph, and let G be a regular graph if. Uh, 
t equals two, then exactly one non-principal eigenvalue theta of g is an eigenvalue of b. In this case, we say that equitable to partition is theta equitable. Let p be a theta equitable to partition of k regular graph g with quotient matrix p. Then the eigenvalues of p are given by k, that is p, p1 plus p, P11 plus P12 or P21 plus P22, and theta, that is P11 minus P21 or P22 minus P12. Let pi be a two partition of the dotic set of a regular graph G for any real numbers A and B, considering function F acting from vertices of the graph to the real numbers, such that for any vertex, uh, U from uh, it takes value a if this uh, vertex lies in the first part of a partition and takes value b if this vertex lies in the second part of the partition. Let theta be a non principal eigenvalue of g. Then the following statements are equivalent. The partition pi is an eigen is an equitable to partition of G corresponding to the eigenvalue theta and vector AB is an eigenvector of the quotient matrix P corresponding to the eigenvalue theta. The function F is an eigenfunction of G corresponding to the eigenvalue theta. So in view of this lemma, the investigation of equitable two partitions is equivalent to the investigation of eigenfunctions with two values. Since eigenfunctions corresponding to distinct eigenvalues of a graph are orthogonal, we can use theta1 eigenfunctions of regular graph G to restrict possible theta2 equitable to partitions of a graph G whenever these eigenvalues are different. For non-principal eigenvalue theta1, let f1 be a 1 minus 1, 0 valued theta1 eigenfunction of G. Denote, let us denote by sub plus and sub minus the sets of vertices of G uh, where F1 takes values one and minus one respectively. Thus, we have an equitable partition defined by pre-images of one minus one and zero. You can see on the screen the, this partition pi. Since uh, a function F1 is orthogonal to the one valued function and one valued function is NK eigenfunction of G, we have that the cardinality of sub plus and sub minus are the same. Take a not principal eigenvalue theta two of a graph G such that uh, theta two does not equal theta one. Consider an arbitrary theta two equitable to partition pi of G and consider a B value theta two eigenfunction of G representing this partition pi. Then, the sets sub plus and sub minus have the same number of vertices from V1 and the same number of vertices from V2. So uh, this property gives us uh, a strong restriction on the equitable to partition for eigenvalue theta two. We can construct some systems of linear equations and try to solve them. And from that, we can have a characterization of equitable two partitions. Let me finish the talk with the last definition that is uh, Cameron-Lieber Cameron line classes. In uh, the PhD thesis by Rogers, among other equivalent definitions, uh, Cameron-Lieber line class L in projective space pg 3 q is defined to be a class of lines such that the condition, the, cardina uh, the cardinality of uh, R intersect with L equals to the cardinality of R op intersect with L holds for every regulus R and its opposite regulus R op. But in view of previous lemma and proposition six, uh, which describes the eigenfunction for, for PG3Q. The condition R intersect with V1 and R op intersect with V1 holds for any part V1 of an equitable two partition of a block graph of projective stainless system, <sighs> PS3Q. 
that is the Grassmann graph JQ42, corresponding to its positive non principal eigenvalue. Thus, Cameron Lieber Klein classes in projective space correspond to equitable two partitions of uh, Grassmann graph JQ42, that is, corresponding to the positive non principal eigenvalue. Moreover, Cameron Lieber line classes correspond to equitable two partitions of the block graphs of affine space and projective space for the positive non principal eigenvalue. And we can formulate a problem that is characterize Cameron Lieber line classes of affine stainer system and projective stainer system. And that gives us the characterization of equitable two partitions of the block graphs for the positive non principal eigenvalue. Further, we plan to study more 1 minus 1, 0 valued minus q eigenfunctions and minus q plus 1 eigenfunctions of the block graphs uh, for such standard systems and get new restrictions on the Cameron Lieber line classes. Thank you. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it was an interesting talk. Here is some uh, notes from Natalia Maslow. Dmitri, very nice talk. I should go. Many thanks. <laughs> just in time. <laughs> yeah, just in time. Yeah, okay. Uh, are there any uh, further questions to Dmitri? Uh, excuse me, I have a comment. Yeah, sure. Please, Sergey. Uh, Dmitri, could you please... Uh, go to the uh, beginning of your talk and uh, to the proposition uh, to the propositions with embeddings of the affine plane ag sure. uh, 2q and affine space ag 3q you said that uh, no, no not not extension but uh, the This one about the way the tightness of weight distribution bound uh, concerning the the embedding of AG two Q and AG three Q. Oh yes, that's that's the one. Yes, uh, you you said that uh, the weight distribution bound is tight, but you didn't uh, explain uh, what is the structure of uh, the eigenfunction. Oh, yeah. Uh, for, uh, let me start with a simple one. For, uh, a, fi for a fine space AG 3Q, the structure is the same as for the projective space. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, values one for vertices in regulus and minus one for vertices in opposite regulus. Mm -hmm. And for a fine plane AG 2M, we just have two parallel classes and we uh, have value one for lines from one parallel class and uh, value minus one for lines in other parallel class. Just like in the example for in this small example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sergey, any other comments? Uh, maybe that's all. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dmitri. Any further questions to the speaker? Uh, 